Hello, uh, welcome everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. Uh, we're glad to have you attending our event uh, in this Jumpstarter Career in Estonia event series. Um, today's event, as you know, is called Career Opportunities in Engineering. Um, so we have um, a topical focus on this event today. It's actually the eighth event in this event series. Uh, we've had some other webinars in the past and some uh, on-site visits in early September and October as well. Um, and this event is brought to you from the Institute of Baltic Studies. So I represent the Institute of Baltic Studies. Uh, we're a nonprofit uh, think tank based in Tartu. My name is Mart, and I will be the moderator today. And together with me are my colleagues, Anna Gaisa. Um, you're welcome to say hey. hello, Anna Gaisa. And, and also my colleague, Maria. Hello. Uh, so. Anna Gaisa will be the co-moderator and Maria will help us with all the technical details in the back. Um, and this event is, is organized within a project um, um, that is funded by the European Union Asylum Migration and Integration Fund and the Ministry of Interior. Um, so they have made this uh, possible to have these events. And the purpose of these events and our project in general is really to help uh, foreign students in Estonia uh, to enter the labor market and find opportunities for interning, for working, and for volunteering in various uh, Estonian companies. And then we organize these Jumpstarter Career in Estonia uh, events where we bring companies uh, together with the students and the companies can, uh, can then present what they're doing and who are they looking for and what type of skills uh, do they need. So that is the general um, gist of it, uh, of, of this uh, meeting. Um, a few words of code of conduct for today. Uh, we encourage you to ask a lot of questions because these meetings uh, are for you, the students. Um, and to ask questions, please use the chat function, uh, either the chat function to write your questions there. And my co-moderator, Anna Kaisa, will later read out your questions to the speakers. Or you can also ask verbally. Uh, so after each presentation, we will enable you to, to turn on your camera and your audio. Um, and then if you use this uh, raise hand function in Zoom that I'm sure you're aware of, um, then we can give the word to you to ask your, your question also uh, in person uh, to make it, uh, yeah, to make the connection uh, more smoother or better. Uh, but the choice is up to you, whichever way you prefer, uh, but please uh, do ask questions um, because in the end, this is all for you. Um, and the event is recorded, so keep that in mind, please. Um, we will also be sharing a lot of links in the chat uh, throughout the session today, uh, some links to the different websites and other upcoming events, so you can keep an eye on those as well. Um, and otherwise, the main the rule is to let's, uh, let's be polite to each other and, and let's have a good learning session and hopefully some fruitful connections uh, will be uh, formed on the basis of today's event. Uh, so today we have three companies presenting. Um, we have Eesti Energia. Uh, Eesti Energia is a state-owned international energy company. And this will be represented by Hellerin. Uh, Hellerin, you're welcome to say hello to the students. Hello. Uh, thank you, Hellerin. Then we have ELRT Group, um, which is one of the largest industrial holdings uh, in the Baltic Sea region. Uh, Marina, uh, welcome. Hello. And then uh, finally, we also have CRC, uh, which provides uh, design and engineering, technical refit and interior refit services in maritime and offshore sectors. And this will be rep represented by Peter uh, Karanen. Uh, Peter, uh, welcome. Thank you. And hello to all of you, of course. Yep. And uh, going forward, also a few words about the students. So this will be interest, will mostly interest our companies that we still see that people are joining the session, uh, but in principle, we had 85 registered students, uh, mostly from Taltec and University of Tartu. And as you can see, the field of studies uh, are all uh, more or less connected to engineering. So various different professions uh, that the students are currently obtaining uh, in the universities. Um, so we have a very thematical focus today. We have concrete companies uh, with a lot of engineering skills needed. And then we have students who provide uh, these who are able to be the young talents who will be working in these companies uh, potentially in the, in the future. Um, but with this, actually, I will conclude uh, my introduction and I will stop sharing my screen. And I would like to invite our first speaker, Hellerin, uh, to, to take over um, and introduce us Esti Energia. Hello, thank you, Mort, for the introduction. 
I will shoot, share my screen. Please let me know if you can see the slides. Yes, and if you go to presenter mode. Mm -hmm. Just one second. There's a ribbon right on this uh, area that I want to click on. Just one second. No, no, no problem. We have time. Mm -hmm. And now can you it's see now full screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you again. Hello again. I am a recruitment specialist in Estonia Energia, and I am pleased that there are so many of you here today, waiting to hear about the possible career opportunities. And as said, I will be presenting Estonia Energia, which is an international energy company uh, owned by the Estonian state. So more about Estonia Energia. Uh, we operate in the Baltics, uh, which is Latvia, Lithuania, Lithuania, and Estonia, but also on the Finnish and the Polish electricity and gas sales markets, and as well as on the international uh, liquid fuels market. And we create energy solutions from electricity, uh, heat and fuel production to modern uh, sales and customer service and other energy related additional services. And uh, we are a company with quite some experience. Uh, our unique knowledge of uh, oil shale uh, processing and technology is valued all over the world. And we take responsibility in that uh, resources, but also technology and electrical grid just as with us are used in the best possible way. And it is important to us to change the production of energy more and more environmentally friendly. Uh, we are on a journey to zero. Uh, we take part of the green turn or green revolution. And uh, we actually have a goal to be oil shale free by the year 2033. And by the year 2040, we have an ambition to be a chemical uh, industry uh, basing on the so circular economy. And we operate in four fields. Uh, these are renewable energy, uh, large energy, grid services, and customer services. And uh, we can only bring the electrification based on renewable energy to life if we cooperate with the client. Uh, so we are client-centric in our activities. Uh, here you can see more specific fields of activities. Uh, we produce electricity, we operate on the gas market, uh, but it is important to us to create value for the customer and to provide that the customer, that the client can have all their services uh, from one place. Uh, so we offer complete solutions, uh, which includes green plan consultations, uh, but also lightning services and coming back to the uh, full package service. Uh, also, we offer flexible energy management and infrastructure infrastructure solutions. Uh, also, Estinergia offers insurance, heating solutions, and uh, the future, of course, e-mobility solutions. And connected with that is uh, the electric vehicle charging network solutions. And we are focused on green energy. So for the client too, we offer solar energy solutions. Uh, but past internet and street lighting. And of course, an important issue is uh, saving energy. So we offer battery solutions as well. And on this slide, you can see the electricity generation capacities. Uh, NFE Green is a subsidiary of AST Energia and it focuses on producing green energy. Uh, we have the most capacity uh, in producing energy with wind farms, almost 400 megawatts. Uh, the wind farms are located in the coast areas of Estonia and Lithuania. Uh, and then we also have solar power plants uh, all over Estonia, in inland, and also in Poland. Uh, and in Estonia, as well as in Latvia, we have cogeneration plants. Uh, it is wise to produce electricity and heat together, just to be more efficient. Uh, and we also have an hydroelectric power plant and a pellet plant that is in Latvia. So in conclusion, uh, we use different sources for the production of energy and we focus on the green turn. But to talk more about our values and people, the energy heroes, uh, it is important to us that you are here, uh, learning and developing, growing, uh, we know that everything uh, starts with uh, your experience and we value people. And we believe that uh, the valuable knowledge is what creates the future of energetics. 
a cleaner environment and also a happy customer. Uh, so we value learning culture. Uh, we encourage you to step out of your comfort zone because people who never do that, uh, where we believe that they will not develop or grow. And I, we think that uh, we all should have a wish inside us uh, to grow because development is something you cannot force on someone. So it is important to have it inside you. Uh, there are many opportunities for self-realization in our affiliated group. Uh, and uh, we do believe that it is one of our strengths. Uh, but to focus more on the internship opportunities, uh, we had over 130 interns in the previous year. And we can say that on average, uh, we have almost 200 trainees a year, but last year was different uh, for certain reasons, of course. Uh, we have had the most internship opportunities in the uh, north and east of Estonia. Uh, but also in Tartu and on our home markets in the Baltics region, that is again Latvia and Lithuania. Uh, we are flexible and since we operate all over Estonia, there are many opportunities uh, in other regions as well. Uh, but more on the demographics, our youngest uh, trainee was 20 years old and the ones with the most life experience were 49 and 60 years old. So we value life uh, long learning and self-development. And uh, to talk about uh, internship duration, uh, on average, uh, an internship lasts for two months, which is also the minimum duration I would recommend in Est Energia. We are a big company and there is a lot to learn and experience, but our longest internships have lasted six months. So here I listed the uh, more specific fields that we operate in. Uh, we do have a wide reach, and I believe that everyone can find a field that speaks to them the most. Uh, other than engineering, we also have opportunities in IT, customer solutions, and analytics. So yes, our scope is wide, and uh, to, uh, we can offer opportunities for almost everyone. Uh, here you can see our workout. The keywords uh, represent the internship opportunities we have offered over the last year. As you can see, there are more specific words uh, than in the last picture. Uh, for example, we have engineer, energy, electricity, solar. Uh, so I suggest that you find the keywords that speak to you the most. Uh, but other than internship opportunities, uh, we also collaborate on the dissertation or a thesis. Uh, so if you are interested in the energy world and you would like to do more research in your field, uh, we are open to talk about this too. Uh, we have competent, qualified specialists for supervisors. So to conclude, uh, there are many different opportunities and I encourage you to contact us if you would like to discuss some thoughts. Uh, more about our interns, we value our interns. Uh, the trainees are trusted with uh, real tasks and challenges that create real value. Uh, we also recognize young talents among us and a uh, great uh, example is before you, uh, Mita Antonio. Uh, he completed an internship with, with us in the previous year and also in the 2020. We submitted his uh, candidacy to the Practicum Laude contest, which uh, picks the best interns in Estonia. And Antonio did amazingly and won the award of the best international intern. So with us, young talent and great results are valued and recognized. And so maybe more about what we are looking for in trainees. Uh, first and foremost, to have an open mind. We value creative thinking, but also looking at things objectively and being open to new, no new knowledge, opportunities and challenges. Uh, secondly, we value high learning skills. It is important to develop and uh, learn new things. Uh, and when it comes to language, uh, since we are a company owned by the Estonian state, about 80% of our communication is in Estonian. So I would encourage to learn Estonian as it is important and also opens more doors. Uh, it is also important to us that you are results oriented uh, we are a customer-centric company, and it is important to us that uh, when providing services, uh, clients get the maximum value and the best experience. And last but not least, it is important being able to adapt. 
the energy sector is changing in lightning speed and every day there are new challenges and opportunities just waiting to be discovered and turned into solutions. So to wrap it up, uh, we are an international energy company owned by the Estonian state. Uh, we are progressively environmentally friendly and we are client-centric in our activities. Uh, we value learning, uh, sharing of knowledge and also openness. And we have different opportunities uh, in a range of different fields. And we also offer different forms for cooperation. So uh, I encourage you to ask me questions, but also to contact us in the future if needed. So thank you for listening. And I will gladly answer your questions. Yes, uh, thank you, Hellerin. I, and I actually also, I would like to invite my colleague Anna Kaisa on the screen as a co-moderator. And I see that we're working now questions. Um, so first of all, um, just one second. I see that one participant has raised her hand. So uh, you are welcome to turn on your microphone and camera now, uh, Arjun, and ask your question from Helerin. Uh, yeah, hi, Hellerin. Uh, thank you. It was a wonderful uh, um, um, seminar about SD energy, and uh, I really appreciate that uh, you have come up, uh, you know, forward to um, present uh, SD energy uh, to all the engineers who are studying in Taltec and Tartu University. Uh, so one thing, one interesting thing which you said at the end is learn Estonian language as early as possible because 80% of the communication is Estonian. But see, uh, like, you know, we international student come here and, uh, you know, study here at Taltec or with Tartu, but uh, it would definitely take time for us to learn the language. But how do we get opportunity to work as an intern? Because see, my skills, I have six years of work experience as a solar design engineer and I happened to see one of the advertisement on the notice board in Taltec that you know there is a design engineer position for solar and my the roles and responsibilities were pretty much same what I have previously worked in my previous organizations but only one thing which I don't have is the language so is there any possibility that you know international students can get the opportunity to work as in, in such great company because it would help us to learn the language and to know about the company uh, future as well. Because, you know, this COP26 session, which has happened two days ago, that European Union is targeting towards having huge amount of installation of solar panels in the next, and they wanted to reach the carbon neutral as early as possible. But if the language is going to be a barrier in such a great company, then how can you um, support international talents? I know this is a big question. Thank you for the question, thank you. Uh, yes, language uh, is uh, a topic for us uh, and we do value that uh, the international students also learn Estonian. So I would say that uh, with us, unfortunately, yes, it is important to speak Estonian, as most of the uh, communication is in Estonian. Uh, there uh, is, um, in a certain region, uh, there is also more uh, communication in Russian, but uh, mostly, as yes, uh, we would focus on Estonian, yes. So we do encourage uh, studying the language. Mm -hmm. But in principle, Hellerin, just to be clear, uh, if, if an intern comes for two months, can they manage only in English or, or does or is Estonian then still necessary? Uh, it really depends on the team that the intern joins and on the position. Uh, for uh, to speak more general, uh, in IT we have teams that uh, speak uh, mostly in English, but uh, to focus on engineering, uh, to be fairly honest, yes, there is a requirement for Estonian language that is bigger, yes. Okay. So it depends okay. on the uh, individual position, I would say, but Estonian is a uh, important part. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would now also ask Anna Kaisa, my colleague, uh, to moderate some of the questions that we've come from the chat. Um, do we have something to ask from Hellerin? Uh, from yes, we do. Um, about the internship, we have two main questions. First, how do you apply? So maybe if you could answer that first. 
Uh, yes, there are. Uh, you still have my slides open. There is a link energia.pe slash practica. Uh, there you can see our open internship uh, opportunities. But also you can always email us uh, via practica at energia.pe and you can uh, maybe send your profile or describe yourself a little and we can look into possible internship opportunities for you. Thank you. Also, what's the best time for applying for internship? That is a good question. Thank you. Uh, we have two biggest internship campaigns. Uh, the first the one is a, take, takes place in the springtime uh, in uh, February and March. So it is a, during the campaign, there will be a lots of different uh, internship opportunities. And the, the second one takes place in autumn uh, from September to October. But we also, we would encourage to follow internship opportunities throughout the year because uh, there are the, the, some other opportunities throughout the year as well. But these are the uh, periods with uh, uh, most opportunities. Thank you. We have one asker, Mossing. Would you please turn on your audio to ask the question? Yeah. Moshin, do you still have your question uh, that you raised your hand for? Then you're welcome to ask it. Uh, hello, so uh, I am Mohsin. I am studying computer system engineering in Toltec. Uh, actually, I have the same question about internships. I like in uh, it's the energy company, especially. I have a background of electrical as well. So I have some more than almost two years of experience in electrical field like in power power generation to uh, and in uh, green energy as well so i was just thinking about to uh, apply in energy estonia company so in terms of you know, internships so that i can uh, then start my career in that so is there any uh, what, what is the way to get in the like we ha i have to take the internships directly then Yes, uh, thank you for the question. I would recommend you to contact uh, the email address uh, on the slide, practica.energia.ee, uh, and uh, maybe share your profile or talk about yourself a little and then uh, discuss about possible opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. I think, Hilary, the follow up of this would be uh, do you also have like a pipeline that some of the interns you employ afterwards? Uh... I'm sorry, could you repeat? Yeah, like, I mean, because we were talking today primarily of internships, uh, but do you also offer uh, some interns after their intern period a full-time job uh, or after they graduate? Uh, yes, actually, a lot of our interns that uh, start off as interns actually end up working with us. Uh, so we do recognize if uh, there is talent and if uh, the intern is competent, then there are opportunities for work, yes. Okay, that's great. And Anna Gaisa, do we have some more questions in the chat? We, we still have two minutes uh, left. We have one very small uh, question, which will nicely wrap up the internship. Are the internships paid? Uh, yes, that is a good question. Thank you. The internships are paid. Uh, at least of uh, the minimum uh, value uh, issued by the Estonian state. Uh, but uh, if there is a possibility and if the internship intern uh, really shows that they are really competent, then there is also a possibility to uh, talk about the sum. Okay, and I see that we, we don't have any other questions in chat or, or, or any hands that haven't been raised, but I would like to ask one question myself still, Hellerin, because we have a bit of time. Um, you mentioned learning culture a lot uh, and how, how AST Energia values it. Um, how does it play out in practice? Uh, does AST Energia provide some extra trainings or, or what is meant by this um, yeah, learning culture? Yes, we value trainings, but also uh, when we speak about interns internships, uh, if you join our team as a trainee, you will most definitely have a supervisor, uh, but also um, mostly you will work in a team which uh, can support you. And uh, we also have different um, uh, how do you say, like uh, courses or like seminars uh, inside our company to, that you can register yourself to. And you can also, uh, we also value sharing of knowledge uh, between coworkers and maybe like uh, giving uh, tips. Uh, I started off as an intern myself. 
and I have been um, and uh, my journey has been uh, very pleasant because uh, my co-workers uh, had me to like work shadow for them which I think is a great experience so I think yeah the collaborative uh, environment and uh, uh, sharing of knowledge is what makes it the best that's clear. And I think there's one last question in chat, and I will also uh, ask this um, because it's again about the language. But I guess the question is really about um, do you also support somehow the language learning? If you have an intern or, or somebody working with you, uh, do you provide them courses from your side or direct them to courses? Or do you alloc like work time is allocated for learning the language? Or is this extra um, effort from, from the person themselves? That is a great question. I know that we have had, uh, like, how to say, Estonian language cafes that you get together and you speak Estonian. So this supports the language learning. But also, if the um, environment is in Estonian, then this also supports the learning. Thank you. I hope that this answered your question. Yeah, I think so. So thank you, Helerin, um, for your presentation, for these clear answers. Uh, once again, if everybody, anybody is interested, then you have this link in erigia.de Praktika and also the website uh, to, to follow up. Um, and that, that's basically it. So thank you very much, Hellerin. Uh, we will now go on to our next speaker. Um, and I would like to in, uh, encourage, uh, invite uh, Marina on the screen. from PLRT. Uh, yeah, hi. Do you see uh, my presentation? Do you hear me? Yes, it looks fine. Thank you. Great. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank all of you participating and devoting your time and giving us the opportunity to uh, introduce our companies. And as you see, my name is Marina and I'm a training manager at BLRT Group, uh, the largest industrial holding in the Baltic states. So our history started in 1912. Uh, uh, more than 100 years ago, uh, when it was decided to uh, build a shipbuilding yard here in Tallinn. So here on the photo, you can see uh, our territory in 1916, uh, when uh, almost all facilities were ready. And here is the same territory uh, nowadays. Uh, today, when we speak about BLRT Group, is, it is much more than just a shipbuilding yard. We operate in eight countries. So as you see, uh, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Poland, Ukraine, Russia, and Norway. And we have over 50 subsidiaries and four joint ventures. And these joint ventures are with quite well-known companies. Uh, for example, uh, Elme Messer Gas is a joint venture with Messer Group from Germany and Wärtsilä BLRT Estonia as a joint uh, venture with Wärtsilä. Then we have McGregor uh, BLRT uh, Baltic and Kodu Sadam in cooperation with company Mercom. And our team comprises about 4,000 employees uh, all over the countries. And here in Estonia, it is more than 1,500 uh, employees. Last year, our turnover was uh, more than 500 million euros. And it is uh, usually quite difficult for us uh, to explain in brief uh, what BLRT Group does and what are the main activities uh, of our holding. So just to save your time and give you a hint about BLRT, I would like to show you a, a short video presentation about our site here in Tallinn.
So as you have seen quite many different uh, uh, fields of activities and massive production, uh, main activities are uh, shipbuilding, ship repair and conversion. And we have uh, three shipyards here in Tallinn, in Turku, Finland, and in Klaipeda, Lithuania. But also, uh, as, uh, as soon as I have mentioned already, that we have uh, over 50 uh, subsidiaries. We have companies that offer high technology equipment and metal structures production and metal product processing and sales. Uh, companies that offer mechanical engineering or transportation services and stevedoring and port services. Uh, we produce and sell industrial and medical uh, gases. Um, uh, we offer scrap collection and processing. We have our foundry here in Tallinn. And also we have a real estate development company. It is uh, quite famous, Noblesner Report at the moment. I, um, I hope that you have heard about that. And uh, that's why we have over 300 different occupations, actually, uh, only here in Estonia. And we have more than uh, 250 engineering specialists. So engineers, technologists, non-destructive non testing specialists and quality inspectors. And of course, uh, quite many different uh, other options uh, like sales managers and purchase managers, uh, bookkeepers and IT specialists uh, or work and safety specialists. Our cooperation with universities and vocational schools uh, has a long history. We have an average of 50 to 60 interns annually. Mainly our interns are from Estonia and Ukraine, but we have uh, had some uh, from Georgia and Germany as well. For six years, we support, for example, annual competition of young welders as a part of skills excellence event Normeister here in Estonia. And we also support uh, young welders participation in Euro skills and world skills. And our BLRT foundation offers scholarships annually. And as you uh, already understood, we offer internship placements, graduation thesis, uh, tour study workshops, information sessions, and shadowing, and uh, others. And our main message to the student is you have to try to identify the area of your interest and your strength or advantage because it is much easier uh, for us to arrange an internship uh, placement for the student who knows for sure what he or she wants to learn and uh, uh, what kind of assistance from us uh, does she or he need. And of course, the second message is Russian language. As Helerin already mentioned about Estonian language in uh, AST Energia, we have uh, the same issue, but we need people who speak Russian language. So Russian language for um, almost 80% of our internships is a must. And concerning internships, we offer internships all year round. We don't have uh, uh, any sessions. And, but just to keep in mind, we have a low season in winter. It means that we have more time to assist the student, but we have less interesting uh, projects at the moment. And spring summer for us is a high season. We have less time for students, but we have quite many different interesting projects. And due to coronavirus, we do not uh, make a massive internship um, uh, recruitment, uh, we work upon request. So once again, our essential facts. Uh, BLRT is an international holding over 100 years of experience with wide range of activities, uncountable number of interesting projects and possibility to deal uh, with a small part of uh, the process or supervise the process from the very beginning. And how to get in? First of all, you have to go to our webpage and learn more about our companies. Then decide what field of activity and company attracts you most. Then you have to reason out of what do you want to learn or try your hand in during the internship or graduation project. And on our webpage, go to the section career, subsection 
job or a training or graduation thesis and fill in the contact us form. The other option is just email us. When you're interested in internship to the email practica at blrt.ee, graduation thesis personal at blrt.ee or a job cv at blrt.ee. So basically, uh, this is all about the holding. It is quite difficult to show everything. So I have chosen uh, one video to show. I hope it will amuse you because uh, this is one of our projects from year 2017 when uh, fairy uh, Princess Anastasia has changed its appearance here uh, in our shipyard in Tallinn, Estonia. So thank you for your attention and you're welcome with your questions. Yes, thank you, Marina. And uh, I, I especially liked your slide on how to get in very clear step-by-step -step process uh, for, for the students uh, to follow. And also thank you for sharing these videos. Um, uh, Anna Kaiser, questions from your side. We have so far one question in the chat. So I, I encourage everyone to ask more. Um, there is a person who is doing master thesis in IoT security and is asking, is BLRT to working in IoT as well? I'm not sure where uh, I have to check. This is such a specific question. I think that uh, the person should uh, probably email me to the email practica at blrt.ee and I will try to find out with our specialists. Thank you. Yep, is there I'll... any way to bypass the language barrier part when it comes to Russian language? Mm, sorry, once again, uh, could you repeat it? Yes. Is there any way to skip the language barrier part somehow? Because there, there is an issue probably with the Russian language. <laughs> um... At the moment, uh, uh, as I mentioned already, 80% of our internships uh, do uh, um, 
we do require the Russian language uh, command, but there are uh, 20% as well. So as I mentioned, we work on the request basis. Uh, so uh, when I get the application or the, the information from the student that he's or she is interested, uh, then we communicate and uh, usually we settle up the interview uh, and the uh, sightseeing, first of all, and the interview with the manager uh, or sometimes even uh, the member of the board to discuss the options uh, we can offer. As I said, if student knows for sure what he or she wants, everything is possible. Maybe I'll ask one question uh, in, in between here, because I was interested also, you mentioned this uh, um, PLRT Foundation scholarships. Yeah. Uh, what are those and uh, who's eligible for those scholarships? Is it only for workers or interns? or? Actually, uh, the uh, scholarships are for students. Uh, we uh, have uh, two different possibilities to apply uh, through uh, Taltec uh, Orengu Fund. Uh, this is the first option. And the section, second option is uh, in uh, September, usually we have um, uh, the second possibility opened and we announce it on our Facebook and on our web page. And we usually offer three scholarships and each scholarship is for 2000 euros. And it is really for, uh, not only for engineering students, but for uh, almost, uh, I, I don't remember exactly six uh, specialities uh, if I'm uh, right for, uh, for the students. From It doesn't matter what uh, the university they are studying. Thank you for that. Uh, I see that we're getting more questions in chat, Anna Kaisa. Yes. Uh, do most projects involve designing and AutoCAD projects, simulations, or mostly application and building operations? Uh, we have different actually, and not only AutoCAD, but uh, Solid Edge, SolidWorks as well. So it all depends on the project and it depends on the company. Shipbuilding is uh, one uh, story and uh, bigger, uh, massive uh, metal constructions, the second story actually. So uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't want to answer uh, to give the answer for all of the companies. Okay, thank you. Also, additional questions. Are there any software engineering related projects? And I expect there are. Not many, actually. <laughs> but still, we can uh, try and find out what uh, can we offer and is there uh, a, a possibility to, to offer something. Um, I'll also ask a question while we're getting more through the chat and you're also still welcome to raise your hand to ask in person, um, but because uh, our previous speaker spoke of this, um, the duration, uh, what is the expect expected duration of an intern uh, period in your company usually? It doesn't matter actually, uh, 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 as I said, upon request. Uh, it can be, uh, of course, it's quite difficult to arrange a two week uh, internship uh, because the, the, the arrangements are um, longer than the internship itself but uh, still sometimes if as i said if the student knows for sure what is needed and how can we help and assist it is easier for us to arrange it for example someone with uh, with the background in material science do you have any position to to that uh, yep, uh, because we have different labor laboratories as well. It depends on what materials we are talking about. Metal or plastic. If uh, it is about metal, uh, of course we can. If we uh, talk about plastic, uh, uh, then it's uh, quite difficult for us to find something interesting and suitable for the internship. Thank you. And maybe the last question, uh, what would be your personal tips and tricks to applicants? So what do you suggest? What is very important in either the CV or motivational letter or interview? Mm, I repeat it <laughs> once again. Uh, you have to know for sure what are the fields of your interest, what, you are, what are you interested in and what is your strength? 
So if you know it, you're welcome. The world is yours. That's very encouraging. Uh, but is, are there any mistakes that applicants make in your view when sending in their materials that you, you look at this and you're immediately putting it aside? Sometimes I receive emails with uh, a one uh, lesson or, or one sentence, actually. Um, I would like to apply for internship. My CV is attached and I have to figure out myself uh, what are the fields of interest of this uh, student and what can I offer and uh, for how long and uh, does she or he means uh, only internship or together with the um, graduation thesis and project, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't have time to guess. I would like to uh, uh, receive an exact information and re exact re request. Okay, and there was also a question about reaching out perhaps to you personally or either to the links that you showed on your uh, on your slides before. Uh, if possible, Marina, maybe you can also post into the chat uh, once again this email address uh, that, that how can the students reach out to you or the company uh, for a follow up. Yep, yeah, sure. But uh, we are actually actually now right in the time to change our speakers once again. So Marina, thank you very much for your presentation, for your answers. And I would like to introduce our first speaker, Peter. Uh, let's see, Peter, if uh, we can uh, share your screen. Your yeah. seems to work. And you're also still on mute, uh, Peter, but we can see your screen very well. Good. And now I'm not muted anymore. Thank you, all of you, sitting here in the late afternoon and uh, listening to us. I am a CTO of SRC, and uh, SRC differs totally from these two presenters from earlier. We are a smaller company and uh, and uh, but very international. Let's see how this works. We have been in the market for 20 years. And as you see, we have been awarded this year with the Exporter of the Year. So we are, we, we are working in the offshore and marine industry. We have offices around the world. We have in Estonia, Italy, and Norway, Poland, and Netherlands. Our most our biggest strength is, is in fact that uh, it is built on the project history where we have delivered very complex and multidisciplinary projects. And the way how we do it is uh, everything. I mean, we do APC projects. This is the best way for the customer to approach the problem. Our profile more can be, our project profile can be informed that we are short-term projects. We are living in a, with, with a short lead times. Sometimes, of course, we have bigger projects and longer projects, which can last from uh, up to one and a half year. But that is also seldom. It's not what we are uh, planning our business on. Our global FTA today is 60 plus. So compared to our colleagues here, we are much, much smaller. And uh, our future, we see automation design is, is uh, 
one of the key points today. We are entering uh, this automation, not to forget also the environmental impact, what is coming in the shipping and marine industry. The big orange dots is in fact where we have our offices. The black one is projects where we have been doing the smaller or bigger projects. This is in a nutshell what we do. We do design and engineering. We do electrical refits. And we carry out interior refits as well. Tools to secure the quality is normal tools for an office and a bureau like we are company. And uh, all of us do have those. And, and this, is, this, is, this is what we follow strictly today. But this may be most important now for this meeting is the design services. What do we? We carry out 3D scanning. We do our point cloud and uh, modify the point cloud ourselves. We have in-house people who is doing it. We do basic and detailed design. We have a system design and structural design. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the tools, design tools, we have ship constructor and uh, Autodesk plant 3D and so it works. Oh, what we do in fact, this is, the, this is a result of, of our, our 3D scanning and, and we go more into the details here, but uh, that is not maybe the idea. But this is a more complex uh, piping system. It is built on an existing ship and, and uh, based also on scanning. And uh, then we do the design locally here in, in Estonia and, and provide it to the customer or prefabrication. I mean, we take out the pipe spools and, and carry out the job. We do also installations, which is, which is uh, the second part. Of, of, of the uh, projects. Our idea is with the electrical department is, is uh, even to extend the electrical department. And uh, we are entering the PLC uh, reprogramming due to the obsolescence of, of existing PLCs on board the ships and, and the oil rigs. And of course, when we are in the shipping, we have a lot of passenger ships. So uh, we are doing also interior, interior design. Also started again with the 3D scan and, and uh, then we carry out our, our design department is carrying out the uh, views, which will be approved, of course, uh, for the, for the customer or ship owner. Concept design is one of our strengths, to be honest. We can, uh, the ship will be rebuilt to certain other uh, use. Then, then uh, we have done a couple of these and they have been asking uh, us, and this needs, of course, more, more and more designers. The big design projects has been outsourced also from our point of view, the target is not to outsource so much anymore. Here we have an environmental, to be honest, an environmental impact. We have a structural design, we have a scrubber installed, or except the scrubber, which was a Wärtsilä delivery, in fact, is, is uh, prepared and, and uh, planned by SRC. Our 3D scanning is 
as I mentioned earlier, it is, it's also a, a tool for our design. We made really big uh, scrubbers. In fact, those scrubbers were the prototype ever delivered. This is a 60 megawatt scrubber put on uh, 12,000 Teus ships uh, owned by MSC. Technical refits. There are more refits which is coming from the demands from the regulations as well. So ballast water treatment is, is one of those. Scrubber is, is, is the other one, or let's say the first one. And then we have a ballast water treatment system now on the topic and, and that, is, that is ongoing all around the world. Here is one nice picture, NCL. We installed planned and, and uh, supplied, again, Wärtsilä scrubbers, but uh, the remaining part is prepared by SRC. And uh, this was managed, uh, the project management and installation management was done by SRC Ita. Then we have a new rule coming up again. That is a shore connection. Each ship needs to be equipped with a shore connection that's entering a, an a European port. So they need to be prepared to, to receive a shore connection. It sounds maybe easy, shore connection to a ship, but the ship technology is so complicated. So a blackout uh, during connecting to shore power is out of question. So uh, we need to have a, a system that that, that uh, can uh, play, uh, take the frequency and, and uh, adjust it to the ship system or vice versa. Normal projects, Cilia Europe, we have Queen Mary. Uh, we did a certain uh, installation in the flooring. And, and uh, as a final point, uh, the shipyards we are carrying out, the warranty work for several shipyards. The last one was Meyerberg in, in, uh, in, in Turku. Interior, okay. This is a nice place to have a drink on Celia Serenade. Again, same thing, start with the planning, and, and then we produce according to the plans. First approve, and then produce. This is the result. Thank you. That is it. And one, one more thing I will need to say. We have been speaking about uh, languages here, and, and uh, I can announce that the SRC do have English as a uh, uh, company language. So there is no regulations related to that. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And um, we are going to take the questions now. Um, but I'll just answer also to the, to the group that there was one question about the availability of the recording. So uh, a few days after the event, we will send uh, the recording link to the participants as well, uh, in case you missed some of the earlier uh, segments. Uh, but I would like to also invite uh, Anna Kaisa to join me on screen. And uh, let's go through some Q&A uh, with Peter as well. Yes, first of all, um... How are those 3D models of pipe networks used and why? 3D models are a tool for, for piping. Uh, and uh, do we carry out uh, all uh, design. When we do a system design on, on board the ship, we do the scanning first, uh, prepare the point cloud, and then we start to design inside the point cloud. And from that, we, we also will avoid the clashes. I mean, that there is no collisions between pipes or other equipment on board the ship. And after that, when we have the 3D model done, 
Then we start to pick out pike spools with a different program. A pike spool is a part of a pipe that will be prefabricated either in uh, our own workshop here or by a subcontractor somewhere in the world. It depends a little bit. The logistic is one of the big questions here, question marks. Thank you. About the last thing that you mentioned, um, how big part of the process is taking place in the workshops in here? Like estimated, how much are you subcontracting and how much are you doing locally? Uh, yeah, this is, this is of course a question of the type of the projects, but um, we can do the GRE piping 100% in-house if needed. GRE is, is plastic in fact and uh, rain enforced uh, glass fiber pipes. That we can do here. We can also carry out certain steel steel uh, and, and uh, let's say even uh, stainless and, and uh, duplex and, and SMO steel weldings. That's a special welding in-house. But due to um, volumes, we are not so uh, big in those volumes in our facilities. So it is better for us, we do, for a project, we do piping up to, if it's steel piping, galvanized steel piping, we up to 90 or 100% outside, I mean. We, we don't do internal those, those things. GRE, we can do 100% inside, but that is again, uh, depending on the logistic, what is more clever. Okay, thank, thank you, Peter. What about control design building and are you also testing? Is it made by you? Uh, the testing, the pressure test of pipe spools is always test by us and also the system is also test commissioning it is part of the commissioning phase and uh, that is that is carried out by our team thank you what is the skill set uh, of the people that you are wanting as internship for for example what are the skills that you need uh, today, of course, engineering is, is one of the, the, the hot topics, as I have understood, and uh, we also need designers, even more designers, because our intention is to grow in the design. As, as I mentioned, we have a design department. I don't know if I mentioned, sorry about that, if I didn't do it, but uh, we have a design department here in Estonia. It is a tiny one. I mean, we have four, four designers specialized in, in, in uh, own areas. So we'll act as a lead designers. Or then, then we have uh, three designers in Italy. We have two designers in Poland. So we are widely spread around. And in fact, we have one designer in, in US as well. So this is, this is what we need. We can even, I mean, we are very happy to have young potentials to join us, to look at us, to, to, to check if this is something for them. And, and then later on, if they wish, they can apply for a summer job or, or other, other uh, tasks. I mean, project management is uh, very interesting also. And, and Peter, how can students get in touch to, uh, with your company? Is there a formalized application process or is it writing an email uh, somewhere so we have we have on our web page there is the open careers so or careers so please approach through that then it goes to the right person okay Anna Kaisa, do we still have some chat questions coming um, is it possible to work remotely uh, as an intern in the design, for sure, yes. 
And the last one, uh, would you consider people with engineering experience for a project management position? Uh, we have implemented a, a level of three with, with the project management. We have junior project management, and we have project management, and we have senior project management. If we start with the junior, it means that uh, that is this, in fact, uh, easily said that, that that is the site manager who is communicating at the site, checking that everything is done right and that it, according to drawings uh, and following things. Uh, project manager is preparing already at the office. I mean, he's, he, he's preparing the projects, planning and doing, doing uh, decisions. And when we go to a level of uh, senior, which means that you need to have more than five five to 10 years, between five and 10 years experience in the, in, in the marine, marine segment market. That means that uh, you are accountable for, for the whole project. So from the beginning, rookies, welcome to try, check, and, and, uh, and uh, project management is, is, is a very, let's say, it's a lot of uh, responsibility in the project management. It is customer relations. relations. It is to proceed and, and carry out the project and, and, and complete it. Okay, well, thank you, Peter, for all these answers. Um, and, and the message was that you are open for young talent. You're very international and your website has the information on the careers. Um, we are now pressed for time, so I would like to um, go to the final stage of today's event um, and share a bit more information of what um, is to follow uh, um, after the, today's event. And uh, I will share my own screen. So Peter, could you please stop sharing your screen so that I will have the right um, to share mine. So to wrap up today's session, um, I want to say that uh, this was our eighth uh, event in this series, but we have other events coming. And besides these events where we meet uh, with entrepreneurs uh, or employers, um, we also have trainings. Um, they're called these Build Your Career in Estonia trainings. They're four hour sessions uh, for foreign, uh, foreign students. Um, actually, they're meant for non-EU students. And my colleague will also put to the chat uh, some links of upcoming uh, sessions. Uh, there are two coming up still the end of this, uh, the beginning of next week and the end of next week. And these are still on site in Taltec and Maulikol. And then we'll have a bunch in Zoom. And these are four hour trainings where you get basics of Estonian labor market, about working culture, what to expect, um, how to seek for a job. And definitely also these language issues are, are discussed uh, in these trainings. Um, so you're welcome to, to, if you haven't yet participated in these, you're welcome to join these trainings as well. And we will also send you after the, after the meeting today, we'll send you a follow-up email uh, with the sort of timeline uh, of these trainings and how to register. Uh, just please note that these emails are usually full of hyperlinks, so they might go to your spam box. Um, so next week, also check your spam just in case if you're interested in this. And um, in general, for more information, once again, uh, we have our own website here and we have this Facebook group called Unlock Amif. And in this Facebook group, we share information about uh, next trainings and next um, webinars all the time. And you can expect a new webinars coming up in the end of November and early December. Um, they're not yet set in stone, but most likely the focus will be on volunteering in Estonia and then um, a design sector specific event as well. Uh, and we will co continue with these events uh, next spring, uh, hopefully also in person. And, and there you can expect uh, potentially IT sector, uh, engineering once again, and the banking sector. And uh, some of these previous webinars have also been recorded and they're available on our YouTube. Uh, so my colleague will also post uh, the YouTube link. Uh, and for example, in the beginning of this year or in the spring, we had one also engineering focused event that specifically focused on Bernu, the summer capital of Estonia. So that is available on YouTube and you can watch that as well. Um, lastly, that I wouldn't forget, uh, we have a feedback survey. Uh, so I would be grateful if you could take three minutes to just give quick feedback on our webinar uh, to make these better um, for the future. 
And here you can once again see the links um, to the companies. And I would also like to take the opportunity to actually thank Enterprise Estonia, um, by, represented by Karin Batune, and also Estonian Employers Confederation, uh, represented by Anneli Enson, uh, both for invaluable to us in getting in contact with the three companies that presented here today. Um, it, this event pro most likely would not have been possible uh, without uh, their um, assistance. Um, so to wrap up, join us on Facebook. Uh, we will send you a follow-up email, also a link to the recording um, next week. And thank you once again, uh, Hellerin, Marina, and Peter. It was a pleasure to have you here to get your presentations. Uh, I hope that some of the students uh, will reach out to you uh, and, and take, uh, take up on these opportunities that you provide. Um, and this is it from my side. So thank you today for attending our session. I hope you have a, have a great afternoon and uh, stay healthy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.